In the year 1996, the world was struck by a sensation. An ordinary grandma living in a town called Kishtim was living together with a real alien. Wait, what? Yes, he was real. I'm not joking you. Have you heard the story of the alien Alyoshinka? Hello, my friends. Welcome or welcome back on my channel. I know recently I posted on my community section that I'm thinking about quitting because the feedback has gone like rapidly downwards. But well, see, I'm still here, still going strong. Anyways, I'm reading those stories. Might as well tell you guys. And maybe one day <laughs> the numbers will go up again. Who knows? So anyways, recently I made also a poll in my community section and you voted for UFO stories. And yeah, it's been a while since I posted the last UFO story. So here it is, another one, really shocking one, and I bet you haven't heard about it. It also has some visual evidence. You have to judge yourself. <laughs> um, you will understand what I'm talking about. But anyways, this is really creepy and crazy. Just hang on. I remember I first encountered with the story when it actually happened. It was in the 1996. I was still living in Latvia and a lot of Russian TV shows were still allowed in my country. Now they're all banned. And I know that sometimes I just switched on some of them at the background while I was doing something at home. And then there was this shocking story about alien Alyoshinka. At that time, I was like, mind blowing, you know, but then I was uh, not talking about these topics on my channel. So I just like, wow, wow, wow. And that's it. I forgot. But like, now, I don't know how it happened. I accidentally remembered the story. There is actually a whole story about it. There are real people, real testimonies, some controversies and a real being, which is the main important thing. And some visual evidence that prove that actually this being existed. So I'm really, really looking forward to your conclusions about this case because it's wild. Believe me, it's wild. At first, the story gained uh, the attention locally. Some local newspapers were writing about this event. Also, the Russian newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda had an article about this. And afterwards, it was picked up by some local and also federal Russian TV channels. And this is when it actually started. The news spread and almost everyone was now talking about the humanoid that was living together with a human being. Journalists and curious people traveled all the way back to the town called Kishtim, just to be a part of this crazy event, just to learn more about this humanoid and this granny who was living together with this alien. The story starts with a Russian grandma. Her name is Tamara Prosvirina, and she was living in the town that I already mentioned, Kristim. It was an ordinary day for her. Well, not exactly. Her water supply was cut off uh, for the house, so she took a bucket and was heading towards the closest well to get her water supply for that day. And then, on her way to this well, she accidentally bumped into something strange. At first, she heard some kind of like a sound, and then there was was like a movement in the closest bushes. At first she thought like, hmm, maybe like an animal, a wild animal or a stray animal. But then she kind of concentrated more on the sound and she understood that the sound actually resembles somewhat like a child cry or maybe like a whistle. Tamara at that moment decided to follow the noise and also where the movement in the bushes was. And there it is, nearby the closest pine tree, there was something, a tiny body. According to Tamara, she did not think much. She wrapped this tiny body in her shawl and brought it home. And this is where she decides to call this little humanoid Alyoshinka and started to take care of it as if it's her own child. Creepy, I know. It's not a fairy tale, believe me. Just listen. This is definitely not an invention of an old crazy woman. Although about the crazy, we can argue a bit, but just continue listening. Alyoshinka was also seen by other people, including Tamara's daughter-in-law, whose name was also Tamara. So, daughter-in-law Tamara actually received a telephone call from Grandma Tamara, and in this conversation, she told all of the details of this crazy story, how she came across with Alyoshinka. And in this conversation, she said, I quote, I found a new baby. On the next day, Tamara decided to go to Grandma Tamara's house and see this being with her own eyes. And 
there it was. And as she said, it looked like out of this planet. She said that this being had a very large head, larger than the body. It had very large eyes and it had like a small hole that she felt like this being was breathing through. What seemed the, the most unsettling for daughter-in-law was to see how Alyoshinka was eating. According to daughter-in-law, Alyoshinka did not eat food like humans do, like this being didn't chew anything. When Tamara, the granny Tamara, was giving Alyoshinka some food, it kind of sucked it in, as if, I quote, it consumed it. And besides the daughter-in-law, there were also some other people who saw Tamara with Alyoshinka in her hands. In most cases, there were neighbors, but also some other people from the town witnessed how Tamara was carrying around little Alyoshinka. And here I'm quoting one of the witnesses. When Tamara's son was put in prison for theft, Tamara became weird. She started to take these walks with something in her hands that looked like an infant. She actually was telling us it's her baby Alyoshinka. However, she never showed the baby's face. So all of us neighbors decided that she had become nuts and was just holding a doll. The rumors of Tamara not being in her best mental state was nothing new in the town. She had done also some other creepy stuff. For example, sometimes she went to the local cemetery, was stealing flowers from the graves, and then was using these flowers to decorate her house. So an odd elderly lady. However, there is one thing we cannot deny. There are people who actually saw little Alyoshinka's body, like the daughter-in-law. And what's also very important, Alyoshinka's body was also seen by a real policeman, investigator, and there are also photos and videos with Alyoshinka, but we will get to that. And so, a month passed and at one point Tamara got seriously ill and was hospitalized. There are ambiguous theories about what actually happened to her. The first one is that she really was sick, therefore she ended up in hospital. The second option is that the neighbors called uh, emergency because they couldn't stand how Tamara was behaving, walking around talking BS about her Alyoshinka that she found in the woods and now was taken care of as her baby. Now, I personally believe more in the second option uh, because I think maybe somebody was interested in taking Tamara out of her house so that Alyoshinka stays alone inside the house. You'll understand what I mean. Continue listening. When Tamara was sent to the hospital, and I forgot to tell you that it was mental health hospital, so this also kind of mm, adds to the theory that it was actually neighbors who called uh, the emergency. While she was there, she was like crazy, crying out, talking to the medical staff, telling that you should probably go to my house because there's like an infant. This infant needs attention, otherwise it will die without me. Everyone in the hospital ignored Tamara's words. They were like, yeah, she's an old crazy lady. She's talking BS, like we shouldn't listen to her. I wish they had though. Now, back to the people who actually saw Alyoshinka with their own eyes. As we all know, it was daughter-in-law who actually saw how Alyoshinka looked. There were also neighbors and people from the town who saw her from distance or a little bit closer that Tamara was carrying something in her hands. There was also one man who saw Alyoshinka completely, like face, somebody, everything. And his name was Vladimir Nurdinov. And he was a frequent guest in Tamara's house. This Vladimir, after hearing that Tamara is hospitalized, felt like, hmm, probably I should go to Tamara's house and check on where is Alyoshinka. If he's alone there, what's happening? Unfortunately, when he arrived at Tamara's house, he found Alyoshinka's body already dead. According to him, when he arrived at the house, little Alyoshinka had already died from dehydration and starvation, and the body had already started to mummify. Now, about this Vladimir, there is a little controversy, because one option, according to himself, is that he came to Tamara's house and found Alyoshinka dead, but there's also Another rumor uh, in the town that actually Vladimir was living with Tamara in her house and he was like a partner to her, I don't know, and that when Tamara was taken to hospital, he actually stayed in the house with Alyoshinka and basically neglected him. And then there is also the third option how Alyoshinka's body was found. 
This third option says that this body was not actually found by Vladimir, but by the daughter-in-law. And after she found Alyoshinka dead, she handed over the body to Vladimir, I guess, because he was like a close friend to Tamara. I don't know what was the thinking behind it, but yeah, so there are like three kind of rumors spreading about how the body was actually found. So this part about how the body of dead Alyoshinko was found is a little bit foggy, but there are some things that we can be 100% sure. Alyoshinko was dead and it was Vladimir who at the end ended up with the body in his hands and it was Vladimir who handed it over to the local investigator. His name was Vladimir Bendin and I will call him Mr. Bendin because there are too many Vladimirs in the story. Also Tamaras, by the way. But the process of handing over Alyoshinka's body to this investigator, Mr. Bendin, is also a little bit foggy. One story tells that uh, Vladimir called uh, the investigator and handed over the body to him because he didn't know what to do with this dead humanoid. The second story tells that it was the investigator who actually visited Vladimir in his house because he wanted to talk about some cables that Vladimir had stolen in the area. And uh, this is how he accidentally bumped into the dead body of Alyoshinka in the house. At first, when the investigator saw uh, Alyoshinka's body, he thought like, yep, it's definitely a dead child's body. So he took the body and brought it to Dr. Irina Yermolaeva, and uh, she was um, assigned to analyze the body and give some answers. So what... Uh, did this doctor say after the analysis? Well, she was saying that this body is indeed uh, something that once had uh, living tissue on it. So it was a living being. It was not a doll that Tamara was carrying around. And her conclusion was quite logic about what had happened to this body. However, later on, it was... Uh, discussed and some people argued with it. She announced that this body belongs to a prematurely born child and that this child had some abnormal deformities. Now there is very important side note in relation to this case in general and in relation to the area where this event took place, namely Kishtim. You see abnormalities and deformities in children in this area would not be something very surprising. We've all heard the story of Chernobyl disaster in 1986, but not so many people actually know that there was another nuclear disaster and it happened in the year 1957 in Kishtim. So Kishtim is located near the Azorsk nuclear complex, also known as Mayak, where on September 29th, 1957, a violent explosion involving dry nitrite and acetate salts in a waste tank containing highly radioactive waste contaminated an area of more than 15,000 square kilometers. The explosion resulted from a failure of the cooling system of the tank. So the previously mentioned Azorsk um, nuclear complex uh, was actually built around this Mayak combine and it was like a closed city. It was not marked on the map, so nobody knew about its existence. And the closest like real town to this area where this explosion happened was actually Kishtim. Mass evacuation took place, but it was limited to the closest settlement, so probably just Kishtim. It was estimated in 1990 that at this time around 10,000 people lived in areas where the level of ambient radiation was more than quadruple that of the average in Chernobyl's restricted area after 1986. Okay, considering this and like accepting the theory of prematurely born child who had deformities because of the area's past, we still have a lot of questions to ask. Who was the mother? Did she really leave the body by some random pine tree? And remember Tamara, she was walking around and telling that this body is alive. And even the daughter-in-law saw that little Alyoshinka was alive. The theory that this body was in fact a prematurely born child with deformities was argued by another expert. It was the investigator's clinical assistant. Her name was Lyubov Romanova and she said that she had never seen deformities like this in humans and this is something that definitely cannot be related to human being, like human child. 
And of course, the public decided to agree with this second opinion rather than relying on this prematurely born child with deformities. So, you know, if you have to choose before prematurely born child and possibly alien, what would you choose? Miss Romanova had written down all the things that, in her opinion, make the humanoid body not human. Among these things, she mentioned something like the fact that the head consists of four bones with sharp edges, which is different from that of a human. Rumor in the town spread like a wildfire, and soon everybody in the town was talking about Tamara and her lost baby that is actually an alien. And also, of course, the media. Yes, when media heard about this story, they came to Kishtim because they saw an opportunity to earn money on this story. Even Japanese TV journalists came to this small town and started to throw money on the local people just to make sure that they say something about the alien in the camera. Just imagine, like, you live in a small Russian town where probably life already is not uh, rainbows and unicorns and then there are people coming giving you money and you just have to talk some shit about aliens. Why not accept it? Why not invent stories, you know? But I'm not blaming them. Life must be tough there. Like, remember, Tamara had her water supply cut off and her partner, Vladimir, he was accused of cutting and stealing cables in the town. So a lot of these witness statements, you have to filter them for sure. But apart that part of the town who were believing or earning money from this Tamara story, there were also people who sincerely believed that Vladimir and Tamara actually sat down by one table, invented the story and had like everything planned out in advance. Uh, they believed that they were uh, running around the town with a doll in the hands and they did this just to get the attention of media and earn some money from it. However, I must disappoint these people. It's not true. They didn't invent this story. As we already know and we have established, there was a doctor who confirmed that the body contained living tissue that was now mummifying and it's already confirmed that Tamara and Vladimir actually didn't get any financial benefit out of this story. And so after all of this speculation and craziness and attention from media, a lot of additional experts started to appear and tried to offer some help in solving this mystery about Alyoshinka's body. And one of these people was, I guess he was a respected ufologist. His name was Boris Zolotov, and he offered to examine the body and also do something that had not been done before with this body, namely a DNA test. So Mr. Benlin, the investigator, actually handed over Alyoshinka's body to this Mr. Zolotov so that he can do the tests and also the DNA test. And I assume that he had checked his background, like he must have been some kind of uh, real scientist to do that and was not like a self-proclaimed ufologist. So I guess this investigator trusted him and knew that he's an expert. But hold on, hold on. The investigator's decision to hand over Alyoshinka's body to this Mr. Zolotov, I guess, is something that he will regret doing all of his life. The investigator gave Alyoshinka's body to Mr. Zolotov to fill in the missing gaps in the story or to confirm one or the other version of the story. But the result is that we don't have any Alyoshinka's body at all anymore. Nobody can examine it. Nobody can see it. There is no way how to get answers anymore. And hold on, here is how it all happened. So... After the investigator gave Alyoshinka's body to Zolotov, he patiently waited for the promised results. Uh, days passed, weeks passed, months passed, so the investigator got curious. Why does it take so long? I mean, it's science, I don't understand all the details, maybe it does take a lot of time. I should probably confirm this with him. So he tried to call him several times, but couldn't get hold of him. Mr. Zolotov had gone missing together with Alyoshinka's body. Possibly an alien body, possibly prematurely born child's body. Without any sign of Mr. Zolotov and without any sign of Alyoshinka's body anymore, this story does not really make sense. 
it's like a legend. It's like somebody invented it. And when the story went out publicly, like in the media, people got very angry. Some really started their own investigations and success. One Russian TV journalist or TV program actually managed to track down Mr. Zolotov. Now, Mr. Zolotov was in trouble, but he came up with the most ridiculous story that I have ever heard. So he said that he and his assistants were on their way to the lab, uh, taking Alyoshinka's body for the first analysis. And then suddenly a UFO ship landed in front of their car and they took the body of Alyoshinka. They took him back up in the sky. There is no Alyoshinka anymore on this earth. How convenient. I mean... Probably he was thinking, like, if people are eating up the story of this body being an alien, probably they would also believe the story of aliens taking the body back. I don't know. It's so ridiculous. But in general, they're like two versions of what actually happened with Mr. Zolotov and Alyoshinka's body. The first... Uh, version of how things uh, were going after Mr. Zolotov got Alyoshinka's body is the following. So when he got Alyoshinka to himself, he immediately understood how much money he can earn from this. I mean, selling this in like some kind of black market auction where some creeps are buying relics like this, Oh my God. So probably Alyoshinka's body at the moment is somewhere in some kind of big mansion, in some kind of rich private collector's collection of creepy things. We don't know. And Mr. Zolotov earned some good money on it. The second version is more adventurous and more interesting. So it said that probably Mr. Zolotov was approached by some kind of special agency or department or government department who took away Alyoshinka for their own investigation. I mean, it's not very unusual that these like intelligence services uh, try to take away these uh, alleged aliens wherever they appear and they just want to like erase them from the earth and keep to themselves for their own investigation. It's not like it doesn't make sense, you know? Besides, some Russian journalists afterwards said that they have an information from like reliable source. Uh, and this source said that Mr. Zolotov and also some of the people living in Kishtim who were giving testimonies at first were forced to sign some confidentiality papers. And this is why Mr. Zolotov was forced to come out with this alien abduction story, I guess, because he couldn't do anything else. He couldn't invent anything else. And I don't know if this contributes to this uh, version of Secret Services taking away the body for their own investigation or not, but it's certainly weird and it could be. So I'm just going to tell you this. Around the time when Alyoshinka's body got lost together with Mr. Zolotov, Tamara died in a hit and run accident. Yeah, she was trying to escape the mental health facility and she died in an accident. Also interesting is that Tamara was actually scheduled to have a meeting a couple of days after she accidentally died uh, with an expert who was supposed to do a regression hypnosis on her. So all in all, this case was put on a stop, like there was a dead end, but still there was like a little tiny movement afterwards. There was a woman who wanted to remain like private, uh, she didn't disclose her name, but she brought in to the investigator a blanket saying that she had taken it from Tamara's house. And this was the blanket in which Tamara was wrapping Alyoshinka in. The fact that this blanket belonged to Tamara and uh, that this blanket was used uh, for wrapping Alyoshinka was confirmed by the daughter-in-law. And so this blanket was taken for a DNA analysis and they found actually a human uh, DNA on it. And it was assumed that it's Tamara's DNA. And then there was like another thing, like another material they found on this blanket, but they couldn't recognize what it was. Like they didn't know what kind of liquid or material it was. I don't know. Again, it opens a whole universe of speculations of that, this is actually an alien DNA and that's why we cannot recognize it. But obviously we cannot consider this blanket and the results of the DNA, it's like very vague, as a solid evidence. 
No body, no evidence. No answers about who Alyoshinka actually was. Officially, this Alyoshinka's body, according to the first evaluation of the Dr. Yermolyaeva, is a prematurely born child with deformities around 20 to 26 weeks old and actually a female. So now we know the gender. But there is just this one official report from a doctor. No other additional experts managed to analyze it. So it's up for us to believe and dispute this. And again, I will repeat myself, if this really is the case of a prematurely born child, why didn't the police uh, put in some sources into finding the mother of the child? Because she might have some answers. And also important, experts determine that if a prematurely born child at this age would have been left by some kind of random pine tree in the woods, it would die within the first hours of its life. But remember, Tamara was carrying it around and fostering and taking care of it. It was still alive. And also other people saw that. Another fact that is worth mentioning is that although we can be a little bit suspicious about uh, Grandma Tamara's uh, mental health, the daughter-in-law's mental health was totally fine and it was confirmed by medical experts. And she, up to nowadays, sticks to the initial theory and to the initial testimonies and has not changed the story at all. Like, even the details are still the same. She's saying the same. And I quote... I used to visit my mother-in-law twice a week. She was living on her own. On that day, I brought her foodstuffs just like I did before. I was about to leave when she told me, we better give some food to the baby too. Then she showed me to the bed. I took a closer look at it and saw him. He was on top of the bed, squeaking some funny sounds. I could see his mouth shaped like a small pipe. His tiny scarlet tongue was moving. I also spotted two teeth inside. In a way, he looked like a little baby. His head was brown and his body looked gray. I didn't see any eyelids. He didn't have any genitals either. And the pupils of his eyes were widening and narrowing, just like the cat's eyes do when you turn on the light and turn it off again several times in a row. The fingers on his hands and feet were pretty long. I only bothered to ask my mother-in-law where on earth she got the monster from. She told me she found him in the forest. She kept calling him Alyoshinka. She gave him a candy and he started sucking on it. I thought it was some kind of animal. So what we're left with is actually only legends and stories. Um, some of the documents uh, that prove that there were some analysis of the body. There are some testimonies and a lot of discrepancies and no body. And what is most important, I think, which proves the existence of this body at all, whether it's a baby, whether it's an alien, is the fact that the investigator actually filmed Alyoshenka when he first received the body. So there is a video. It's uh, super low quality. So I'm, I'm really going to try. So excuse me, if you don't see anything, the quality might be very bad. Now it's, I know, it's, it's creepy, heck it's creepy, but this story is really, really interesting and it's such a shame that proper analysis was not done uh, with this body and it would be very good to have more opinions of professional doctors or experts that would confirm one or the other version of this story. Anyways, guys, share your opinions of this uh, story. Have you heard about it? What's your opinion? Was it an alien? Was it a baby? 
let me know in the comments. Let's discuss. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you will send in your stories from where you're living, uh, any kind of creepy stories, true crime, aliens, whatever, from your area, send this to this email. And if you're active enough, I will probably make a live video where I will read out all of these stories and probably react to them. Please do that, because I don't see you being very active. <laughs> I hope you have a lovely day and see you next time.